Now for those who didn't catch my last DIY project, you probably won't know, or may not know, that we finally bought the narrowboat that we've always wanted. So now I think it's time to come clean and let you know the secrets I've been keeping. But I think it's best to start at the beginning. And that starts way back in 2013, when me and my fiance, now husband, had been renting properties around the Midlands for about three years. And one thing my parents have always taught me is that rent money is dead money. Now, I appreciate not everybody can buy a property, especially now properties are, even this week, are reported to be even more expensive and it's harder to get a mortgage. But it always surprised me how expensive rent money is and increases. And we started paying about £500 a month for a one bedroom maisonette, which was so expensive. But the reason we were here was I used to be a fashion retail manager for many years in Leeds, Doncaster and Harrogate before transferring to a new store in Solihull so I'd be closer to my boyfriend who'd also moved there for work prior. And I was at my last shop for about two years until I realised that I should be working for myself, which by the way, last time I checked, it was a Thomas Cook. And then we moved further away into the country, uh, maybe a little bit less, for a three bed semi detached house. So I certainly didn't want to rent forever and I had absolutely no desire to do DIY on somebody else's home and increase the value on their property. Apart from I loved upcycling furniture, which are actually my very first YouTube videos if you look for them. And then I was very conscious of all the properties that were selling like hotcakes around us. So I insisted to my husband, fiance at the time, that we needed to start scraping for a 10% deposit. Now it did take a while to convince him because it wasn't our dream area and you have to work your way up. Also, we did already have a wedding fund growing, which ended up turning into a Mazda Bongo camper van fund, and then a fund to repair that. But after a few months of putting every bit of spare cash we could into that account and viewing a lot, and I mean a lot of properties all over the Midlands, we eventually found a two bed semi bungalow that needed TLC. In fact, I'd seen it a few months prior, but me and my mum poo-pooed it with it being too small to start a family, house all our stuff. And I think what didn't help that it was labelled as a chalet, which is the kind of thing that me and my family used to stay in at Butlins at Skegness in the 80s and 90s. And once it was booked in, that very night I did loads of research, particularly because the layout was not in the listing and it was an unusual layout. And I got an all important key vibe from the estate agents that the sellers would accept a low offer. I really clung on to that. So I went to view it on my own. I put a cheeky offer in on my own and it was accepted the next day. And by that point, I decided to take my husband along with me and it met all of our criteria because it was cheap. We didn't have to borrow a massive mortgage and there was lots of renovations to do where we could increase the value and it wouldn't just increase with inflation. But that's one thing that really didn't faze me and maybe I was being a bit too ambitious, but I've grown up seeing my parents renovate properties constantly with a quick turnaround. So seeing past a few bits and bobs that needed doing really didn't faze me. And I remember calling my dad while I was at work to tell him that it had been accepted. And I remember his words saying, you did good there. And I thought, maybe I am turning into my parents. And so for the next few years, I really didn't anticipate what was gonna come next. Learning so much and all the TV opportunities that have come with it too, like being on BBC One's Right on the Money and The Carpenter last summer on Love Your Weekend with Alan Titchmarsh. It's definitely a surreal moment when you're working alongside someone that you used to watch with your family while you were growing up. But let's get back to the bungalow. When we first moved in, I used to have an eBay vintage clothing business. And in fact, that's what I really wanted the garage for, the storage space. But deep down, I couldn't help but feel that my English and journalism degree was going to waste. We'll talk about that in a minute. But over the next few months, I'd be getting tradesmen quotes in for different jobs around the house. And my parents and in-laws would say yay or nay because my father-in-law is also uh, an ex-site foreman in construction. So it's been really useful having both a carpenter and someone who's worked on site. 
And in the very early days, my parents sent us a builder to help us out for things like a conservatory, redo the garage roof and other bits. While my in-laws came to show us how to tile the bathroom, install a lintel in the kitchen so we could knock a wall down and block another one up. This would give us more kitchen workspace. And then my husband would give me little challenges in the week to say, okay, we've had this quote, see what you can save us by doing it yourself. So my job is to hide this hideous boiler and all the pipes. In fact, everything in this kitchen is pretty hideous. Now, the reason why we haven't spent much on doing this room, even though we've lived in this house a year now, is because every room needs some major renovations. And that wall you see there is going to be completely knocked out. So can I do this boiler? I, I just don't know, but I'm going to give it a go. I did it. It's cut out and I've laid it flat and I'm gonna screw again. Oh, that's a bit awkward. Oh, and by the time he'd get home from work, I'd be absolutely pooped while he'd been gearing himself up all day at work to come home and do DIY. Our workflow just didn't match anymore. Plus there's something therapeutic about working on my own with coffee and music. Oh, and hands, definitely hands. Meanwhile, I'd also started a food blog and YouTube channel, Tastefully Vicky, where I was sharing my favorite recipes, but also learning how to edit videos. And I think filming in a very dated kitchen is what also spurred me on to do something about it. But this is where it got more challenging after I'd finished doing all of the wood chip wallpaper removal, filling the walls and painting them. This is where I had to spend hours, if not days, researching on YouTube. And because each home is completely different with its own unique obstacles, I started to feel a real sense of duty to upload my versions and what I found really challenging as well. Like the time I didn't want to spend £2,000 on blackout conservatory roof blinds. That really reduced the heat. Or how I saved £1,300 by altering my own vertical blinds for a lean-to conservatory without sewing and the time I had to conceal and cove around some awkward pipes in my bedroom. And after slowly working my way through the small jobs, they then transpired to slightly bigger ones, like building the deck in. And then one day, my neighbor said to me that he'd be really disappointed if I didn't do my own tiling. And it hurt quite a bit, but it did make me think. Said that was my next job. Hi everyone, so I'm back in my kitchen and I'm gonna continue tiling. I'm still nervous about it all because looking around there's definitely slight gaps between the kitchen worktop and the wall so I'm gonna have to try and tackle it as I go along but I am impressed with my first ever tiling job here which is just down there just mind the the mess and I think it's safe to say that by this point I felt hooked hooked on DIY and renovating the transformation of the before and after, I hadn't realised how bad it looked before. So yeah, I definitely recommend tiling to everyone. And this is when I really started to question myself, what else could I achieve if I pushed my limits and got out of my comfort zone? So I started laying my own patio with aggregate and sand. I think this is a perfect beginner project. Then another one with mortar Sure, I forgot to check the garage doors opened in different directions, but I don't like being defeated. So I chipped away before it set, dug it deeper and did it again. This is the kind of thing that I'd be pulling myself up for if I looked at it every day. And then next was a gravel driveway because these larger projects didn't seem so daunting anymore. And it's only really been the last two years since I've learned carpentry off my dad, like going to Doncaster to build the summer house in the back garden which is really my workshop, but you would have found out eventually. Which leads me to the next part. So the first major news that I've been keeping a secret, although some may have caught on, is that we've sold the property during lockdown and we've moved back up north closer to our family. So, so many things have changed. In fact, quite a few of the last videos that you've seen, I've been doing projects at the bungalow where we're living now, and it's actually the same bungalow that we were helping renovate with my parents. And we've bought that now. But with it being up north, we're able to still have money over 
to buy a narrowboat that we always wanted. And the decision originally was to live on this. Well, my husband wants to, and I have a lot of tools, as you know. So we're gonna completely renovate this, well, as much as possible, but future-proof it with the intention to possibly live on it, at least for extended periods of time. But yeah, we've just gotta see how it goes. So in terms of DIYs, I'd love for you to keep following along on my DIY journey. And yeah, there's gonna be some for a boat as well as a house. And if you would like to see the final look of how our house looked in the end, then I'll leave a link to that video on my Patreon page below. Or if you just wanna go and support me, it's kind of like a tip jar. And I also try and share any early previews when I can. But if you wanna support me at no cost whatsoever, to be honest, the kindest thing that you could do is just go and read one of my DIY blog posts or go and see one of my recipes and follow along. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.